In Kentucky, pro-life lawmakers have been preparing for this Supreme Court ruling for some time. Capitol reporter Bodie Brooks has been in Frankfurt all day long learning more about Kentucky's so-called trigger law. Bodie. That's right, Imani. Reactions have been pouring in from lawmakers on both sides of the aisle all day long. Just behind me, a small group of protesters has been standing here on the Capitol steps uh, protesting the decision made by the Supreme Court. A handful of cars have been driving by this evening, honking in solidarity. Some sharing stronger feelings on this issue today because Kentucky is only one of 13 states with the so-called trigger law, meaning the debate over the future of abortions in Kentucky is already done. In Kentucky, in particular, abortion essentially ended today. Uh, and we know that women will die and children will be sentenced to a life in poverty. Representative Josie Raymond says she feels grief and righteous anger. Friday's decision by the Supreme Court to overturn Roe v. Wade already rippling into Kentucky. Kentucky is one of several states that has enacted legislation that would automatically take effect once Roe was overturned. The legislation protects babies from all forms of abortion. So as of this morning, except where the health of the mother is at risk, abortion is no longer lawful in the Commonwealth. Attorney General Daniel Cameron applauding the ruling and releasing some guidance on Kentucky's trigger law now in effect. Kentucky's Human Life Protection Act makes it a felony to perform an abortion in the Commonwealth, but not to receive one. That can only happen with limited exceptions. You may see going forward a very small number of abortions performed in hospital settings uh, because we do have that one exemption to save the life of the mother or the functioning of a vital organ. But that's it. Governor Andy Bashir calling the 2019 law extremist for no rape or incest exceptions. But much of Kentucky's majority pro-life General Assembly calling it a victory. Representative Nancy Tate, who sponsored this year's bill targeting abortion-inducing medications, said the Supreme Court has given the power back to the states to decide, which is how it should have always been. From this moment on, states have the power to choose whether or not to uphold the sanctity of life. Kentucky has some of the most extreme uh, anti-abortion laws in the country, but I don't believe that they're stopping here. Representative Raymond has a different view shares much of the pro-choice worries this could open the door to limiting things like birth control. She hopes both parties can find common ground with what she calls family supporting policies. A similar tone echoed by the Attorney General. I want to make sure that uh, folks know that we now have to have empathy and compassion and recognize that we need to connect children with families, families that want these children. And the pro-life work by the General Assembly is not yet done. In November, there is a constitutional ballot question asking voters if abortion is not considered a constitutional right just in the state of Kentucky. Additionally, some of the abortion laws that came out of the session this year, such as House Bill 3, Cameron's team will be going back to court asking judges to lift some of the orders blocking the enforcement of those laws. Live at the state capitol, I'm Bodie Brooks, Fox 56 News. Bodie, thank you.